Father, thank you, Lord, for this day, and I ask, Lord, that you would send us your spirit as we talk about the ark a little bit, and then also about some of the things that are in our world today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about the ark. Where's my clicker? Let me get that going. All right. All right. So you guys remember the story of the flood? Okay. What was the reason that Noah had to build the ark? Does anyone know? Yeah. But there was a reason why. Do you know what that reason is? Why did God have to send a flood? Well, because there was lots of badness in the world. There was a lot of badness in the world. That's right. According to Genesis 6, verse 5, that the wickedness of man was everywhere. And it was so bad that God couldn't even redeem it. So he said, you know what? We're basically going to have to start over. But why did he build the ark? What was the ark for? What? So say that again, because I think you're right. Um, To save Noah because he worshipped God. Okay, to save Noah because he worshipped God. Was Noah the only person? Yeah. Okay, all right. So it wasn't just Noah, but also his family. And what? Pairs of the animals, right. How many people do you think that God wanted to get on the ark? Do you think it was just Noah and his family? You say, you, you don't think. You think it was more people? Who else do you think God, no, God wanted to get on the ark? Huh? Jesus. Jesus was already on the ark. Come on. Do you think that God even loved the bad people of the world? Of course. You know, he created them. So how many people do you think he wanted to get on the ark? Just knowing his family and just the good people? I think God wanted everybody to get on the ark. Would you agree? Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I think that God wanted everybody to get on the ark. And and the door was wide open until the angel of the Lord shut the ark. You know, wow, wouldn't that be a heavy responsibility if Noah was the one that had to shut that ark? But it was God himself that shut the ark after all the animals got on the ark. And so the door was wide open. Anyone could have walked on there, good or bad, right? And yet, how many people got on the ark? Do you remember? How many people got on the ark? Do you know? Five? Okay. Huh? Okay. More than five, less than ten. Eight. All right, very good. Eight. Eight people. Raise your hand if you thought it was eight. Okay, all right, it was eight people. Eight people got on the ark. Who were those eight people that got on the ark? Who were the eight people that got on the ark? Noah and his family. Okay, all right. So Noah and his wife got on the ark. That's two. And then Noah's sons got on the ark, and that was three. And who? Um, it, the Bible doesn't say his daughters got on the ark. But three more people got on the ark. What other three people got on the ark? Nope. Okay, so let's, let's count again. And Noah and his wife, and then his three sons, and who else got on the ark? Huh? His parents. His parents? No. Huh? Who? Jesus. Jesus was already on the ark. Yes. Their wives. Very good. Okay, so, so here we go. It was Noah and his wife. And then his three sons and their wives. So that's eight. Okay, so those eight people got on the ark. So let me ask you a question. Would we be here today if Noah's children, I mean, if Noah's sons and their wives didn't get on the ark? No, no. Because Noah's sons and their wives, they needed to come on the ark. Why? So they could make life. So that they could continue life. Isn't that right? So, wow, isn't that amazing? Did you know that there's eight billion people on our planet, and those eight billion people came from Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives. And if the wives didn't get on the ark, if no females got on the ark, none of us would be here. Isn't that something? That out of those eight people is how our whole world is inhabited today. And so let me ask you a question. What kind of animals got on the ark? 
elephants. Okay, well, I guess what I mean is how many animals got on the ark? Raise your hand if you know. Raise your hand. Is your hand up or are you just scratching? Okay. Is your hand up or are you just itching? Itching. All right. Yes. Two of each kind. Okay. Two of every animal came on the ark. So were they two boy animals of every kind? Two girl animals of every kind? Raise your hand if you know. Okay. One boy, one girl. Okay. One boy and one girl of every animal. Why? Why would God need one male and one female of every animal to get on the ark? Yes, sir. So they could make life? So they could make life. That's right. We wouldn't have the animals that we have on the earth today if one male and one female didn't get on the ark. Very good. Okay, so it's, again, another affirmation that God made how many kinds? Two kinds, male and female. And male and female is how we reproduce and, and repopulate the earth. And so Noah and the ark is another affirmation of God's design that life comes from one male and one female. All right, are we cool with that? All right, so I want to ask you a question. We've done a lot of this. Let's get through this. Blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. Animals of every kind. Okay. So what does it take? Oh, hang on. We need to go more. La, la, la. All right. La, la, la. La, la, la. Okay. Many ways to be a boy. La, la, la. La, la, la. Okay. Many ways to be a girl. All right. Here we go. So have you guys been to a farm? Raise your hand if you've been to a farm. Raise your hand if you live on a farm. Does anyone live on a farm? Import you live on a farm? Who lives on a farm? You live on a farm? Okay. Do you live on a farm? Have you guys been to a zoo? Raise your hand if you've been to a zoo. Has everybody been to a zoo? Not every. Oh, okay. Every. How about this person here? Is he okay? Have you been to a zoo? Oh, okay. You didn't raise your hand, so I wasn't sure. All right. So when you go to a zoo, you see all kinds of animal life. You see parents of the animals. What does it take to make a baby chick? What does it take to make a baby chick? Raise your hand if you know. Yes? Huh? It takes an egg. Who makes the egg? Huh? The mom. And then who fertilizes the egg? The dad. Okay, so what are those? What is the mom? What is a mom chicken called? A hamster. <laughs> I think we're going to have to go to biology class pretty soon. Okay, what is a female chicken called? Hen. Somebody said it. Who said that? Oh, very good. Okay, a hen. I thought you said a hamster. All right, so what is, it, what is a male chicken called? Just say it. A rooster. Okay, so a rooster and a hen is what it takes to make a baby chick. What does it take to make a baby cow? And let's... We know that it takes a female cow and a male cow, but what is a female cow called? Nope. Nope. I'll give you. I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. It begins with the letter H. Not a hamster. That word seems to keep coming up for you, Mister. All right. It begins with the letter H. Does anyone know? What's that? A heifer, that's right. Yay, the teacher knows, the teacher knows. So hang on a second. What is the name of a male cow called? No. A what? Did you say hamster again? I'm just checking. Okay. What is a male cow called? It has a name. It begins with the letter B. A boy cow. No, that's not it. That's not the answer we're looking for. It, a what? What? You said it. A bull. Very good. What's your name? What's your name? Bella. Bella got it. It's a bull. So it takes a bull and a heifer to make a baby calf. Do you agree? Raise your hand. Do you agree? Okay. Do you agree? Do you agree? Okay. All right. So it takes a bull and a heifer. So again, God's design is that to create life, it takes a male and a female. Not only do we have that in the, in the world of humans, but we also have that in the animal kingdom as well. All right. So what I want to do is switch a little bit. And I want to talk a little bit more about the things that are going on in your world. And so remember, we were talking about how the devil comes to steal, 
to kill and to destroy. Do you remember that? Do you guys remember that? Remember, the devil wants to be like God, right? He wants to be God. And so we know that the devil... Hang on. Hang on, guys. So we know that the devil wants to be God. And so he is really angry that God bypassed the angels and gave the gift of life to man. And so he's going to steal, kill, and to destroy this precious gift that he's given to each one of us. It's really sad, but some of the statistics that are out there today is that only 3% of boys... And 17% of girls have never seen pornography. And so it's a very, very interesting question. And I just want to ask you to raise your hand. Can you raise your hand if you've never seen pornography? If you've never seen pornography. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, one of the things that are going on in your world is that the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy this precious gift that God has given to each one of us. What's that? Sure. It's a great idea. So did, can someone define what the word pornography is? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pornography is a, a, a video or an image of people naked that are either doing provocative poses or actually engaging in sex acts. That's what pornography is. See, the problem is, is that your age group is the age group, ladies, your age group is the age group that the pornography industry is targeting because the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy this precious gift that God has given to each one of you. And he wants to destroy that, meaning that if he can expose you not only to pornography or sexual things, then he's going to steal this precious gift that God has given to every male to be a father and every female to be a mother. Because remember, when we talked about in the Garden of Eden, that God blessed the union between Adam and Eve, and that was where marriage began. And then after they were married, in a committed lifelong relationship, that's when God said, now you may have sex and have children. And that's the way that God designed it to be. So we know that the devil is going to try to steal this precious gift, because if the image of God was placed in each one of us, then it's the devil that wants to destroy the very image of God that he put inside of us, and nothing destroys the image of God more than sexual sin. So it's not just LGBT issues. It's also pornography. It's also um, sexual things that happen before marriage. So what's unfortunate is that many of our young people, and I've heard people that were as young as seven and eight years old, that became addicted to pornography because they were exposed at such an early age. So what we want to do is we want to inspire you and we want to equip you about what's coming in your world today. And so even in the bookstores, what they do is they place the pornography magazines very close to the children's section of the, of the children's books. And all of this is done specifically to expose your young minds to images that, that will actually destroy your ability to see your, your wife or your husband in the light that God had designed for each one of us to be. My first exposure to pornography came when I was 10 years old. Some of you are 10. Who's 10 in this room? 10? Okay, so that was the first time that I was exposed to pornography, and I didn't know what to do with, about it. I didn't have a parent that I could go and explain what had happened to me, and so I just stuffed these feelings down, and I stuffed those thoughts down, but you know, even as an older man, I still remember exactly what I saw on those pages when I was 10 years old. That's the power of what pornography does to a young mind. So because some of you, or many of you, have not been exposed to pornography, I think that that's a wonderful thing, especially living in this world that you're living in. And Yanisha and I, we want to make sure, we want to help you to give you tools to help protect and to, and to um, protect your precious minds and to keep you from being exposed to these things, but also to keep you from being addicted to those things so that you can have the husbands and the wives and the families that God wants you to have so that you can be happy and healthy and you can have healthy children as well. So there's many things that are in our world. Pornography is wrong, according to statistics, that 28,000 people are looking at pornography every minute of every day, and that 102 million viewers are looking at pornography every hour. $3,000 is being spent on pornography every second, and that means $11 million are being spent on pornography every hour. 
This is how powerful pornography is in our world today. And again, as young people, you have choices that you're going to have to make that are going to affect the rest of your lives. And we want to make sure that you know what's out there in this world so that you can be careful, so that you can protect yourself as well. 70% of all men between the ages of 17 and 34 are addicted to pornography, and that's actually one in three women are also addicted to pornography. These are the statistics that are out there in the world that you live in today. And so many times, you know, parents let children use the laptop or you have a telephone. Do you, does anyone have a smartphone? Anyone have a smartphone? Okay, all right. And so if your parents don't have any restrictions on your smartphone, did you know that the pornography industry, when you just look up um, uh, Barney the Purple Dinosaur, did you know that the porn industry is already wanting to attack you and to expose you to these images? Because the sooner that they expose you to those images, the sooner that they can get you hooked on porn and that they can start getting your money. And so again, this is how the devil steals, kills, and destroys the precious image of God that he's put in each one of us as males and females. According to Covenant Eyes, 83% of boys and 57% of girls have seen group sex. 69% of boys and 55% of uh, girls have seen pornography showing same-sex intercourse. And again, only 3% of boys and 17% of girls have never seen pornography. Those are staggering statistics. So again, our desire is that we can help you to be able to like say, you know what? I don't want to see that kind of stuff. I don't want it shared with me. And if somebody sends you something or whatever, you can look away, you can delete it. But remember, you have to make decisions today as young people about the things that you're going to be looking at the, on the internet and to know that the devil is going to try to attack you, okay? The average age of first internet exposure to pornography is 11 years old. 15 to 17 year olds having multiple hardcore exposures, 80%. So what that means is this is more than just looking at naked images of people. Six, eight to 16 year olds having viewed pornography online, 90% and mostly while they're doing their homework. And so I have a relative in my family, he was six years old and he was opening up the family computer and he was looking for his homework assignment from school and he actually found pornography that his father forgot to clear off of his history. Yeah. And so how sad that this six-year-old little boy was exposed to pornography and he was just innocently looking for his homework. These are the things that are happening in your world today. A child with unlimited access to the internet is like giving a razor blade to a baby. Can you imagine, would anyone give a razor blade to a baby? Can you imagine how terrible that would be? That would be terrible, wouldn't it? And yet that's what's happening every time you open up your cell phones or the computer, because again, remember, be very careful about what your eyes are seeing and don't be afraid to go to your parents. Go to your parents and say, hey, this is what I saw. Let your parents know that, that these are the things that, you're, that are coming up on your internet so that they can help protect you. Does that make sense? Is that a good idea to do? All right, all right, very cool. Okay, we'll pass this. My first exposure, all right. I think we're okay. How much time do we have? 20 more minutes? I think we only had half an hour. Five minutes, okay, all right. Do you have any questions for me? Yes. Um, if one of your people are like married while they're looking at that, um, what happens? Okay, so what happens is when, when somebody is married and they're looking at pornography, that means that they're being unfaithful because God only wants you to look at your husband or your wife. Does that make sense? So in a marriage relationship, should you be looking at pornography? No, no, uh -uh. because pornography is destructive to anyone who's looking at pornography, right? And what happens is you don't realize that even just looking at pornography a little bit will actually hook you and can make you addicted because there are many men and women that didn't expect to be addicted to porn, but because they saw it, they started looking at it. And then what happened is they fell into an addiction that they couldn't get out of. You know, let me explain to you it like this. Did, um, do you guys know what a maze is? Do you guys do a maze? Have you ever seen a maze? You know, it's where you, you have this kind of thing that you have to find your way out of, right? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. 
you know what a maze is? Do you know what a maze is? You do? Okay. Do you know what a maze is, sir? You do? Okay. So a maze, imagine if you would, that somebody blindfolds you, and they lead you into this maze, and you have maybe an hour to find your way out. And so when you go into this maze, you're still blindfolded, but imagine you have to find your way out of the maze. But what the devil does is that whenever you go into start looking at pornography, it's like entering into this maze. You don't know how to find your way out. You desire it. Maybe you want to get out of it. But what happens is the devil closes off the only exit to that maze. And there's no way out. So now you're trapped. And that's what the devil does is he entices us. And then when you go down that road and you go into that maze, he closes off the only exit so that you're trapped in that. Who is the only person that can open that exit out to let us out? Raise your hand if you know. Yeah. Jesus. Why is it that Jesus is the only one that can open up the exit to the maze? That's it. Perfectly. Because Jesus is the only one that died for us, and Jesus is the only one that can save us because of his death on the cross. And so when we find ourselves in a situation, if you find yourself in a situation where the devil has trapped you and you're caught up in this maze of looking at pornography, Jesus is the only one that can open up that exit and take the blindfold off so that you can find your way out of that maze. Why? Because he's the one that died for our sins. He's the one that has already won the victory so that we could have that freedom over our addictions. Thank you. That was beautiful. Can we stand together? Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, then I'll go ahead and play this video for you. And this video is about a young man named Tim. And there were some other things that were happening in Tim's life. Not only did he find himself addicted to pornography, but there were some things that were happening that he was holding on to these secrets and it really changed his life. I want to play this video for you and then we'll have a short discussion about that as well. All right. And so what I find amazing about Tim's situation is he was being molested by a neighbor in the neighbor's garage. He didn't tell his family. He knew that there was something wrong about that, and yet he kept this secret. And what was so sad about his situation is it led him into pornography and masturbation. Um, but when he was 19 years old, still knowing that he wanted out to get rid of this, and yet he was caught in that maze with no exit until his mother found him. And the mother, when she went to pray, that prayer, remember how he said, that prayer came and got me. And, and as he went to his mother's room and they talked about the situation, then they went and got the younger brother and found that he was also being molested by the same kid. And then when the father came home, here the family, they found great healing as they started to open up about the fact that even the mother and father at a young age had been molested. And so the family found their escape from this maze where the devil had blocked off the only exit because they claimed the blood of Jesus and what Jesus did on the cross for them. And so how beautiful that this family and Tim found that freedom. But again, as this young lady said, that that freedom came because of what Jesus did. It was Jesus that was able to open up the escape for them to, um, to come out of that. So there's a lot of things that happen. If you heard in my story, I talk about how I was exposed to pornography at 10 years old. And how I felt like I was a girl trapped in a boy's body. And eventually, at 20 years old, going into the gay culture, which I lived for 20 years, thinking that I was born this way and that that was who I was, I didn't realize that all of that had happened. The devil had trapped me into this maze that had no exit. So again, I accepted I was born that way. There wasn't any way out of that. But it wasn't until I found Jesus later on in life that I realized that Jesus has the power to break the strongholds that the devil closes off to that exit. And so again, if we realize that the devil wants to seal, to kill, and to destroy this precious gift that he's given to each one of us, then doesn't it make sense that we're going to need a savior? And we're going to need a savior who's powerful, who has the ability to break through the strongholds and the barriers that block us in. So I hope that you'll think about some of these things as you go throughout your day. And again, remember that you have to make dis difficult decisions that are going to affect the rest of your life. I wish, Yanisha wishes, that we had somebody that would have spoken to us when we were your age to let us know the things that were out there in this world today. So do you have any questions for me? Anyone?
Any questions? All right. Can we stand together as we close in prayer? All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, so much that, that you have given us an escape. No matter how the, the devil wants to trap us into thinking that these are our thoughts and these are our feelings and that we can be defined by those, Lord, you have set us free. You give us the restoration that is so necessary, Lord, to be happy, to be free, and to be able to be the husbands and the wives, the mothers and the fathers, Lord, that you designed for us to be. I pray, Lord, that you would inspire these young people, that you would help them, Lord, at their young age to make decisions that are going to affect the rest of their lives and even their eternity. I ask, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them in such a way that they would see you and behold you and that they would give their hearts to you, Lord, and allow you to write their love stories. Bless and keep these young people, Lord, those that have been exposed to pornography and those who have not. Protect them, Lord. Keep them from the evil that is out there in this world. Keep them from letting the devil steal, kill, and to destroy the precious image of you that you place in each one of us. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, thank you.